One of my biggest problems with Death Note is that seemingly no one has actually done a video on what it actually does in regards to what exact abilities it would qualify to have, and when people tried, there was nothing new presented or added into the conversation. So let's actually talk about it. What are the exact abilities and limitations of the Death Note? It's time we actually implement some power scaling in the show to see what you, the viewer, can expect the Death Note to actually accomplish and maybe even speculate on how it does it. Just note, there's obviously going to be some rules we're not going to be going over since some of them delve into the technicalities of the Death Note that aren't really relevant to this discussion. If you really want to memorize all of them for whatever reason, the link to all of the rules will be in the description. So the biggest part that needs to be addressed is can the Death Note actually kill anything besides humans? For those who mainly came to this video to see if alien characters like Goku or Superman would fall victim to the Death Note. Well, no, to nobody's surprise. As the kanji Ningen that's present throughout the many rules of the Death Note is a word specifically meant for humans, or to be more specific, actual Homo sapiens. Now, most I'm expecting in the comments to be pointing out that Zamasu says this all the time in Dragon Ball Super, and they always translate to mortals. So, what's the big deal? Well, it really comes down to how the word is used in context. The most common definition for Ningen is actually in reference to humankind, mankind, human being, etc. With other definitions just simply being person, which even when translated over to English can be even more broad. In the case of Dragon Ball, the term human or Ningen is actually far more complicated in its use that it doesn't only refer to Homo sapiens from the planet Earth. I recommend those who wish to explore this in more detail to check out Herms' blog on Konzenshu. It's actually super informative. But back to Death Note. If they wanted to use a more purposely broad term, they would have used Shutsubeki, which directly translates to mortal. So yes, if you're in possession of the Death Note, you can only specifically kill humans. Otherwise, Shinigami would technically fall under that category since their whole existence is killing humans to lengthen their own lifespan or they will die of old age. Which in the first episode and first chapter of Death Note, Ryuk explicitly states that writing a Shinigami's name down won't kill them, with it even being stated that Shinigami write each other's names down as a joke with the only known way of killing a Shinigami being incredibly circumstantial and something that can't be influenced by the Death Note directly if you were to try to use it on them, and involved a Shinigami breaking Rule 17, which specifies that a Shinigami killing a human with the specific intent to save them will die as a result. So while I can see the argument for why the Death Note could affect things other than humans due to that, the issues that Shinigami are the only ones shown to explicitly bypass these rules which resulted in their death. So while the Death Note may arguably have the killing potential to kill beings other than humans, it's due to the rules that restrict it from doing so, and a human never being shown to bypass these rules either, the evidence shows that it's literally impossible to forcibly break the rules to enable the Death Note to work like that. So a story about humans in which a human with a book that can kill anyone can only kill humans. Shocker. So now that we know we can only kill humans, what are the exact limitations in regards to that rule? Well, what about age? Well, you can't kill someone under 780 days old or just a little over 2 years old. And you can't kill someone 124 years old and over. So no, unfortunately you can't kill baby Thanos or that 1000 year old Lolly. Though a funny rule that I came across while researching ends up answering another potential question that someone might have. Can someone of any age actually use the Death Note? Well, it's actually noted that if you're under 6 years old, a God of Death is not allowed to directly give you a Death Note to use. However, if a Death Note is simply dropped into the human world and has now become a property of it, anyone of any age would be capable of using the Death Note to the same effect. So theoretically, your baby brother or sister can still pick up the Death Note and kill someone to the same extent that you can if it were dropped by Shinigami. As screwed up and weirdly hilarious that sounds. Though let's go over some more technical limitations you might come across, especially in today's world. 
What happens if someone changes their name or goes through an entire sex change or plastic surgery to change their physical identity? Well, not knowing someone's original name was the whole reason why L was seemingly impossible for Light to kill unless he had someone with the Shinigami eyes do it, or at least a god of death to do so. And as shown in L Changed the World, it seems like the Death Note is primarily looking for the original name of said individual, as L inputs his original name into the Death Note. Also, if you happen to have the Shinigami eyes, they will just tell you the name the Death Note requires to be written down for said person to be killed by the Death Note. So they would want what their name was before they changed it or even assumed an alias. So what if a person went through the trouble of either transitioning or plastic surgery? And let's say you know the person's name, but they went through a transition to look like a completely different person. Would the Death Note still work? Well, if you're trying to kill that particular person, it would only matter if they happen to have the same name as someone else in the world coincidentally. As we previously went over, changing your legal name doesn't work. So let's say you knew this person since childhood, but they heard you had the Death Note and attempted to change all their features to escape death then flew across the world so they would never see you again. Now most, even myself, would think that this is a ship of Theseus paradox-like situation, in which if we have a ship, but then slowly rebuilt it plank by plank until all of its old parts are completely replaced, is it still the ship of Theseus? Well, fortunately for you, this wouldn't matter, because as stated in the first How to Use, you need to have the person's face in mind, in case there happens to be someone else in the world with the same name. This rule being specifically put in place to protect those who weren't intended to die by the death note. Just like how there's a rule that states that if a certain event would result in the deaths of others that were not written down, they would either simply die of a heart attack or they wouldn't be affected at the moment. So from what it seems, changing your appearance alone wouldn't really matter. As well as rule 20, just explicitly stating that as long as you have a photo of the person in question, regardless of age, you would be able to see their name in lifespan, meaning that just remembering them from childhood alone would be enough. There is also a subtle detail in the series that helps indicates this, as Light learns of Mello from his father, but had never seen his face nor his real name. Nier actually makes note that Mello both got rid of any childhood photos of himself and got rid of any of the orphans that remembered his face. This makes sense as well, as Light never actually met any of the criminals he went on killing sprees for, but because he either had access to records that gave him pictures, or they were broadcasted on TV, it's all he needed. And with that being said, there's another reason why I don't think changing your appearance is enough, and it's based on the idea of the Death Note knowing the true intentions of a user. As we have already gone over many times, your exact intentions in who you're trying to kill are very relevant when trying to use the Death Note to kill someone. With the specific rules put in place, it means to protect those who are not meant to die. And as long as you're very aware of who you're trying to kill, even if you haven't seen them in a long time, by the rules of the Death Note, you would not be immune to it. Now this other reason kind of delves into a bit of speculative headcanon, so take this with a grain of salt. But I also feel like the idea of how the Shinigami eyes work prove that all you really need to identify a person is their eyes. As Ryuk explains to Light, there are two differences that make a human and a Shinigami different. One being their ability to steal the remaining years off of another human being's life when using the Death Note, and the other being their ability to see the true name and lifespans of the people they're looking at, with that last difference being something that a Shinigami can grant someone to have as long as they're willing to give up half of their remaining lifespan. And while you have the Shinigami eyes, as long as you can see their eyes, their name and lifespan appears above them. Which makes me believe that this idea, as corny as it sounds, plays off of the old saying, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So as long as you're able to see the eyes of the person in question, even without the Shinigami eyes, I feel like this would be enough for you to confirm to the Death Note your intentions to kill that person and not someone else. So as long as you know their birth name and no one shares the same name, then they're as good as dead. What's funny about this is that due to these rules being in place and them being in effect whenever a rule is violated, it implies that the Death Note itself 
has this level of omniscience, information analysis, or even mind reading to it, since it's capable of discerning based off what is written and what is intended by the user whether or not the killing of said person should be carried out, and is capable of discerning if the result of someone else's death in the moment will kill other unintended victims as if it had some level of future sight or even discern whether or not the actions written within the death note are even physically possible to carry out. Now, whether or not the death note was created by the Shinigami King or King of Death is entirely unknown and never confirmed, with it only being stated he doesn't replace lost death notes and is the one that distributes them. However, he does hold the ability to write new rules for the death note to follow. As it was shown in the special one shot, he creates a new rule that selling off or buying a death note kills the person doing so, which was written down to prevent the protagonist Minoru from doing so. Though it could make sense if he does create them and the powers of the death note are derived from him, as he stated in the how to read that all of his intelligence stats are immeasurable and is beyond human comprehension. So it's a bit debatable, but I'll ultimately let you guys decide on that. Just know that whether or not this is true doesn't really affect the results of this video. So now that we've gone through the ways people have thought about circumventing death from the death note, let's talk about what it can actually do if you use it. Well, we obviously have to go over how it has some sort of death manipulation by default, as if the death isn't specified or deemed impossible to carry out, then the victim will just simply die of a heart attack, which going by the definition of death manipulation, this applies. Though obviously, if characters are able to live without bodily functions or capable of instantly reviving themselves, then this would be a way around it. And as applied by the rules, writing down someone's name twice would not work. So as long as you resist death once by the death note, you'd be fine. But obviously, normal humans wouldn't have no way of resisting this, unless the user misspelt your name multiple times. Then there's the Death Note's disease manipulation, in which any named human disease, and if the specified amount of time is enough for the disease to progress, then the victim will die from said disease, and even if the crunch time is too tight, they will just die of a heart attack. So it brings into question, what happens if we have characters of healing factors that can either fight off the diseases or just simply stow them off like Deadpool? Would they be able to live from the Death Note? Well, considering how it's often specified that only plausible diseases will fester if one isn't specified or how time is an important factor, this should be enough, especially since it's stated that they must die within the next 23 days from the disease or they'll just die of a heart attack. Then, as long as they survive the heart attack, they should be fine. Which leads into the Death Note's mind manipulation, in which the Death Note is able to influence the actions of the victim before their death or even encourage the act of suicide, with also having the ability to erase the memories of the user. Though this wouldn't be something that the user can impose on others, as it seems that only Shinigami are the ones capable of enacting this on the users of the Death Note after they decide to get rid of it. However, the biggest limitation of this mind hacks being specified in how to use. The conditions for death will not be realized unless it is physically possible for that human or it is reasonably assumed to be carried out by that human. This was the one of the biggest counters I came across on forums that came about questioning the effectiveness of the Death Note's mind manipulation, as well as the idea being explored by Light himself within the series, as due to the vagueness of the statement itself it gives reason for characters within the series to experiment with the limitations of the Death Note's influence, but also for the audience to speculate and debate about what they could, keyword, realistically accomplish with it. For example, if you wrote down X dictator negotiates a peace treaty with X country before his death, unless you specify how they do this, give them enough time to accomplish this task, or be able to physically accomplish it themselves, then they will just die of a heart attack as light imposed onto someone to go to the Eiffel Tower within a few hours, and he just simply died of a heart attack due to him being in prison. Which kind of leads me to believe that unless you have this absolute god tier insight on most people, then it just seems incredibly circumstantial in how you can manipulate them prior to their death. 
with the only exception being that no one that wasn't specified to also be written down the Death Note would die from it. So even if you had some metahuman like the Punisher go on a killing spree before he died, unless you wrote down the specific person they'd kill, they wouldn't do so. Which Light within his own series could have easily done this with Ray Pember in the Bus Jacker, but decided against this because this would only make him more suspicious to L and the Task Force if Ray conveniently died the day he was investigating Light. Then it comes to inducing the idea of suicide. Although the Death Note itself says that it is possible to induce it to any human, as it's a normal thought process to consider, and physically any human is capable of accomplishing the task, therefore you're able to impose it on anyone, though it then brings into question that if someone like Finn from Adventure Time would be able to resist this due to him resisting the Lich's manipulation, which was encouraging him to walk into a well that would instantly kill him. which should allow Finn and any characters like him to resist this, so unless your character has demonstrated the willpower or mind hacks resistance to stave off such influence, then they could subsequently resist the Death Note's mind hacks. Though, as previously stated, they would also have to be able to resist the heart attack as well if they want to survive the wrath of the Death Note. Which then leads into probably the most potent death inducement ability from the Death Note, its fate manipulation or in other words, specifying a cause of death by accident, or in a way which the character can incidentally get themselves killed. Though obviously it would have to be by something that can realistically happen, otherwise we would be making assumptions about things that Death Note has yet to demonstrate to take out beings of higher caliber, and if it takes more than 23 days to accomplish this, then they would just die of a heart attack. Now another thought process that came up as a result of this video is, would half-breeds between humans and other alien species be affected by the Death Note? For example, if demigods like from the Percy Jackson series or Kratos from God of War, because they're half-human, would they be affected? Or would half-alien breeds like Gohan or Gotenks from Dragon Ball, or Mark from Invincible be affected? Which the answer seems to point towards no since the limitations on the Death Note are fairly clear that humans are what the Death Note is capable of eliminating, even specifying that Shinigami can't kill each other with it, with it even being theorized that they were humans prior to becoming gods of death. And due to the many rules where being specific is very important in most cases, it doesn't make sense to me that these characters would qualify and seem more upon this loophole in terms of negating the Death Note. Though in regards to Kratos, he has literally overcome and came back from death to the point where the Fate Sisters have no ability to kill him, he would just say no to being killed by the Death Note unironically. As much as I want to continue down this rabbit hole of going through a bunch of fictional characters that happen to be specifically human and judge whether or not they would be affected by a Death Note, however, I feel like going over that should be its own video or even video series. So let me know down in the comments which characters you want to see covered, and see who would actually survive the Death Note if you yourself were specifically given the chance to write down their name. Now before we end this video, let's give a quick TLDR of the Death Note's abilities so it's easier to remember for those who made it the whole way through, and if you wish to have a more in-depth explanation of them, you can just rewatch the video. The main abilities of the Death Note are, 1. The ability to induce any human named disease within the opponent in order to kill them, though it has to kill them within 23 days. 2. The ability to manipulate fate in which results in a realistic scenario that involves the opponent dying by accident. 3. The ability to influence and manipulate the mind of the opponent to either commit certain acts that are physically possible and reasonable for them to accomplish prior to death, or even in regards to a specific way they die. 4. The ability to induce the action of committing suicide within the opponent. And lastly, 5. Even if any of these fail, no matter what, the Death Note always defaults to invoking a heart attack within the opponent, unless certain prerequisites are met to prevent any death inducement in the first place. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. Death Note is one of my favorite series of all time, so it was a lot of fun researching this and actually providing answers to the question in regards to the Death Note's actual capabilities. But until the next video, thank you all for watching, and class is dismissed.